All right, this is Mr. Anderson for Kellogg Community College, and we're going to spend some time today looking at uh, solving equations, uh, and mostly stuff from Chapter 1 and Chapter 2. So what we're going to do here is we're going to solve for x. Um, there might be situations where we might have no solution or an identity, uh, and then uh, we'll kind of talk about that when we get it. So I'm going to move the 38 to the left here, so moving the 38x under the similar term. This gives me negative 28x minus 7 equals 49. Okay, I'm going to add 7 to both sides. So negative 28x is equal to 56. Divide both sides by negative 28. x is equal to negative 2. And there's your answer for problem number 1. Okay, let's look at problem number 2. All right. Problem number two, what we're going to do is we're going to distribute the negative to this set of parentheses, distribute the 5 to this set of parentheses. So this is 13t minus 5 plus 2t is equal to 15t minus 5. If you collect like terms here, what you get is you get 15t minus 5, and that's equal to 15t minus 5. Well, this is considered an identity where the left and right side are equal equations, because if I subtracted 15t from both sides and added 5 to both sides, I'd have the true in, uh, equality of 0 equals 0. So the answer is all solutions for all real numbers of t. Um, or you can put down, you know, it's the identity. All right, now one of the problems that you've done, you know, quite a bit in this chapter is to solve for a specific variable. And in fact, we're going to solve for this letter P. Now, to get everything away from the letter P, what would be interesting to do is to get rid of the V sub 2 and the T sub 2. Now, the slowest way to do this is multiply both sides by T sub 2, and then divide both sides by V sub 2. But by multiplying in one step T sub 2 divided by V sub 2, and on this side T sub 2 divided by V sub 2, what you get here is V divided by V, these v's make 1, and t sub 2 divided by t sub 2 makes 1. So my p sub 2 is now all by itself, and on the left-hand side we have p sub 1, t sub 2, v sub 1 on the top there. I just chose alphabetical order. And down here we'd have t sub 1, v sub 2. We cannot just simplify or cancel in your case. Simplify these letters if they have different subscripts. So p sub 2 is equal to p sub 1, v sub 2, v sub 1, over t sub 1, v sub 2. Okay, so for the uh, last problem on this page, thus ending the video for this page, uh, we're going to take a look at these problems here, and uh, this, is, this is kind of a good uh, problem to look at here from chapter 2, really d checking to see if you know what you're talking about with the notation. Now this is f of 1. But what this is really saying is what is y when x equals 1? Question mark. What is y when x is 1? Now, what that means is that I'm going to plug 1 in for x and see what y is. So at my x, I'm going to make an arrow going to where my y is when x is 1. And the answer is negative 2. Now another way to write it, you can write it as an ordered pair of 1 comma negative 2. Now the domain is going to be your um, amount of, like, where your equation is from left to right. So this is our horizontal horizontal um, looking at the problem, like from the left to the right. So we would go from low to high. So we write our domain with uh, set notation and x because this is um, going to be from low to high in a continuous form. And our low number on x is negative 4. That's the leftest part of the problem. And the rightest part, or the, the furthest to the right the problem goes, is 2 and our x would be between these two. And since these are solid dots, they would be both less than or equal to signs. 
this is the only way you can write the problem. We don't write this backwards, which with like 2 is greater than or equal to x, which is greater than or equal to 4, negative 4, because that's just bad math grammar. This is the way we write it from low to high, and if these are open circles, we would not have the lines underneath the less than or equal to signs for each of those circles. Now the range is going to be vertical, and they're going to be vertical from, uh, instead of low to high um, on our um, x here, um, actually, Low to high would be also an appropriate way to describe them. Um, maybe for the horizontal, you might want to think of it as left to right, since it might be a little confusing when you go low to high. So again, for horizontal, you can think of it as left to right. And vertical would be, you know, down to up. Any which way you want to think about it, but that's going to set up your uh, set with Y knocking on the door there. And our lowest y value is negative 3. And we, again, look at the lowest point on the line, not necessarily from left to right. And then we're going to go to the highest point on the graph, which is going to be 3 on our y. So y is between negative 3 and 3. And we throw those lines in there. Okay, now our final spot here says any x values for when f of x is equal to 2. So this is asking, what is x when y is 2, because f of x really means y. Um, and you notice how there's no value for x here, so that's what we're trying to find. So we're going to go where y is equal to 2, and we're going to go to where the line is. And by coincidence, it's the same answer as up here, but this is an x value, so this is negative 2. Or if you want to show me what you mean, this is negative 2 comma 2. So negative 2 on my x and 2 on my y. Alright, thank you for watching the video for page one of the test review.